Hi guys, welcome to my brand new YouTube channel. And not before time, I procrastinated about this for about 15 years or something like that, ever since YouTube came out. Now, a million people have asked me questions about how to paint wildlife and specific things, so I thought here is a great place for you all to learn how to paint wildlife, at least how I paint wildlife. Now, I don't tell anybody that I'm doing things correctly, I just tell them this is the way I do it, and I've learned through a lot of trial and error. So here we are, and um, I'm gonna talk to you today about the biggest question I get asked, and the question that I asked a lot of people when I first started and couldn't find the answer, how to paint fur. Okay guys, so listen, I've done this for you here. Now you've got to put your base coats down first before you paint your fur. Now this would be a tiger perhaps, or maybe a lion, doesn't really matter, but it's still the same fur technique that we're gonna use. Now if you go too dark, when you start to put your colors on, it becomes too transparent. So you, this undercoating comes through. So you don't want to go too dark to start with. That is way too dark. Right, we're gonna get stuck in. Now to get this to look like this here, I've just put some burnt umber on this brush. Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna glaze over that very, very lightly. Can you see I'm not, it's very transparent. These colors that I'm using, this is alkyd burnt umber. I'm just pushing that back. You can see I'm pushing it back there, sinking it into this color here. Now when people look at that, they'll think, how did you get that depth? Well, this is the secret. And I'm gonna leave that bit like that so you can see what I'm doing. So. There we go. This area here is dry, this is all dry. This is still wet, but there's not much paint on it. You can see there's not much paint. So now we're gonna highlight having pushed this back with that burnt umber over the top of what we've already done. This is dry. We're gonna go over this with a very, very thin little rigger. This is a three, doesn't matter what you use too much, as long as you get a nice point. Can you see that point there? They're a really nice point. So we're gonna go over that let me see what I'm doing here. Keep coming back to your palette and loading that brush, but you want a nice sharp edge. And take your time with it, take your time. You've got to be subtle with it. Don't press too hard or it'll look like this. And if it looks like that, wipe it off and start again. And don't cover it completely, looking for dark areas. This is a nice dark area in here, you won't be it won't all be bright. There'll be little dark areas in the fur. So really think about what you're doing. I think years ago I would have thought, that's it, I've finished. See, I keep loading that brush and getting that nice sharp point, which you've got to do. Don't go into it too heavy. It's take your time with it. It's a long old process. But you'll get um, a lot of satisfaction out of it if you just take your time. Again, see that nice little point there? Can you see that against that area? How sharp that is? Now, when you finish clean, finish with this, you want to clean that brush with some white spirit and get it really clean. Don't leave it overnight, otherwise you have to throw it away. It needs to be a really, really nice soft rigger to take the paint and uh, get a nice sharp point. So you carry on like that, very easy, okay? Now, you're gonna come back to that. You can also go again. You can put more burnt umber over the top once that's dry, and then do it again, and do it again, until you get what you want. And you'll know what you've got. You'll know it looks really, really good, and you'll think, ah, got it, I've nailed it. Now we still go into that with the dark areas. I'm gonna show you how to do that now, to give it even more depth and make it look more realistic like it does here. And I'm gonna work on this as well. I'm gonna ch change that, clean that brush and put some, some black on it with a little bit of burnt umber. I'm gonna go back into it. Okay, so here we go. I've just put some black and some ivory black and some burnt umber on here. I'm gonna go back into this with a very, very, exactly the same as I was doing before, but with a darker brush now. If, uh, if it doesn't load very well onto here, then let it let this dry and come back into it. You can put some darker areas in it and uh, that'll create the effect that you're looking for. Again, nice and sharp on the edge. 
and if the paint's not going on, add a little bit more thinner. I've got some low odor thinners on this, by the way, which is what I'm using to thin the medium, is it thin the oil. And you've got to keep working it. Uh, it takes a long time, but it's not about quantity, it's about quality. It's the one thing I tell everybody, forget how many paintings you do, just get them as good as you can get them. And it's all about quality, hopefully. See, I'm going in between here. Now, if I started out with this dark area first, as I say, I would not have been able to do it. It would just end up like that. So you have to go in between what you've already done and you can let it dry for you if you want to. It doesn't matter now, it's not wet and wet. And once that's dry, you can go back into that again and go over it with some burnt umber or raw umber works quite nicely. Get some in and shade it in a little bit as I've done here and then put in some more highlights. So from there we'll go to here and I'm going to add some more highlights onto this now and some more lowlights. I'll start with the lowlights because I've already got it on my brush. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Got to get comfortable for this and take your time. Think about what you're doing. Obviously if you've got your piece of reference in front of you you need to be looking at that as well. Make sure the fur is going in the right direction, obviously. Very, very slowly, very subtly. Don't want big strokes like this. It'll just look awful. Just take your time. Nice and... If it doesn't work like that doesn't work, rub it off. But you can see I'm not putting big chunks of uh, oil on my brush. It's all very subtle here. I know when you buy a box of paints and they give you this linseed oil, maybe some terps as well, and these bristle brushes and you think, what on earth I'm going to do with that? Well, that is no good for this technique. You need lower to thinners perhaps, or terps. And there's no, I'm not um, putting any linseed oil into this, or liquid, which is the equivalent to linseed oil. This is wishes of what I use because it doesn't smell on it very fast drying. This is just straight out of the tube with a little bit of lower to thinners on it. And just keep going, just keep going. Just keep that going and think about what you're doing the whole time. And don't worry about this, that line there. You can wipe it off a little bit if you want, but you can also go back in now. So I'm going to go back into this. I like that area there. It looks like it's the fur is just coming over it a little bit. I'm going to highlight this right now and you can see the depth that you're going to create. So just clean that brush. Sometimes obviously it's good to have two of these rigger brushes on the go. But keep them soft so they load the, uh, the paint really well. And by the way, if you can see this, I'm using uh, cadmium orange with some yellow ochre and a little bit of white. That's what I'm using here today. See that nice thin area? thin edge to the brush. Here we go again. So I'm going to highlight once more. You can keep building that up as many times as you like. And it is so satisfying. I'll show you the finished painting in a minute, what it will look like with a really nice thin rigger brush. And don't worry about being a too small of a, a rigger brush because um, they don't hold the paint quite as well. It's all about that sharp edge. That you, that's, it's all about that edge there, not about how long that brush is, but you need it to be able to hold the paint. So now I always keep my little finger here as well so I don't push too hard. It's about muscle memory and practice. And it's a great thing to do this as a little um, um, a practice area like this for yourselves is very very useful because if you try and do a whole painting like this of a big cat and it's just there's just so much work there you're going to get into trouble so I suggest you do a little area like this and just practice and once you've got the technique down and you're feeling confident then you can do the whole the whole animal and there we are, just keep going like that. So hopefully, I haven't gone into this area here, so I quite like that. Now if this is a tiger, there would be a little bit of a stripe there. I'd do exactly the same, but we obviously with different colors. Now I'll show you in a moment. 
I might finish painting what that will look like. There we go. So hopefully you've got the idea there. Some nice, nice depth. Now, these paint, these all these stripes are going one way, of course. Now, there's obviously going to be some loose, uh, loose hairs that do some different things. You can actually wait till this all dries, if you like, and then just come over and go in different directions. Or if you're feeling brave, do it like that. It's nice. If this is getting quite wet now, I suggest you leave it and wait because what you don't want is say that and you've got to rub it off. You can't rub it off because you can take everything off. So um, you might have to go over it again. So again, it's all about patience. Take your time. Think about what you're doing. But there we are. That's the basics of fur technique. Now, when I first started painting, I listened to somebody um, maybe 20 years ago, a very experienced artist, actually, animal artist, and he was telling me about push back with blues, push back with this, and I thought, what on earth are you on about? It's only till you actually do it yourself and trial and error, you actually get it. Now, there aren't many books I've found that you can actually tell you how to do that. You've got to have a good practice yourself. Get the brush out, load the brush out, practice with your hand, paint with your eyes, not with your hand. You've got to think about what you're doing and don't get carried away. Keep looking at your reference. Make sure that it's, it's looking like your photograph. There we go. So that's the basics of fur technique. Now it doesn't matter whether you're painting a lion or a tiger or a leopard or whatever. It's all the same. It's all gonna be like that. All right guys, well, here's the finished painting uh, as promised. Um, there you go. Now it's all about fur technique today. Don't get bogged down in the detail, how to paint eyes and nose and everything else. We're going to talk about that in another video. It's all about painting first today. Now, I suggest you don't do a whole tiger like this when you're just starting. Just concentrate on one little area. Teach yourself to paint fur and you'll get so much out of it. And all your friends are going to be super impressed. I hope you enjoyed my very first YouTube video. Finally got around to it. Uh, well, keep it here. This is all about painting wildlife and you'll learn lots and lots of stuff here, lots of tips and tricks and gain from my 30 years experience of painting pretty much every day. Oh, you lucky people. Yep, today we painted fur, but I'm going to tell you how to paint eyes, elephants, water, all that stuff right here on my channel. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much. See you next time.